Alright, today I'll be showing you guys how to make a progressive house plug synth. And I'm going to be doing this with uh, the Synth 1 synthesizer inside FL Studio 11, though it doesn't really matter which version you use. So the final product is going to sound something like this. Alright, so you can hear that that might sound a little familiar, and it's actually the melody from the intro of Zed's Spectrum. And that's the melody I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So we go back to FL Studio, and I actually already have the melody loaded into uh, one of the, well, the synthesizer that we're going to be using. And of course, you want to first pull up. Uh, your Silent One synthesizer if you haven't already. You can just do that by going to Channels, Add One, and then choose Silent One. But I already did that here. And then once you do that, you would basically put in your melody into the piano roll, but I've already done that here, just to expedite th things. So, uh, right now, oh right, and you also want to make sure you go to Menu and click Init Preset. This will initialize and reset all the settings so we can actually build a sound from scratch. So right now it sounds just like this. It's pretty plain and of course that's because it's initialized right now. So without further ado, we will start building this sound right now. So first of all, you want to make sure uh, in part A, you are already at the saw wave, which is this one. You want two voices, retrig off, and let's get our D tuned to about a little over a third. That will give it a little more body. Okay, and stereo is going to be max, pan is in the middle, that's all fine. And then we want to go to part B and basically have a dupli duplicate of the same sound we have on part A, the first oscillator. So saw wave, two voices, uh, we, don't, we leave all these unchanged, detune about here, and that should be good. And we want polyphony to be at least four or five, I'll put it at six. What this does is basically it, it limits however many notes you can play at once. Before it was at three and well, if we have more than three notes in a chord, it'll, it'll choose like, it'll randomly choose three of the four notes that are there. We want all of them to play at once, so make sure your polyphony is high enough. Okay, so um, now the most important part would probably be applying the low pass filter. With that, we can actually adjust the filter and get the characteristic pluck sound that you would hear in this progressive house sound. So we go back to part A, choose the LP filter, that will be this one, uh, switch over to the 12 decibel mode, input will be oscillator A and B, it will give it a nice fuller sound. And then we go to part B, do the same thing, low pass filter, 12 decibels, but this time we switch it to B A, input. Alright, go back to part A and we turn warm drive on. It's a analog setting that basically makes the sound, well, warmer, a little richer. And right now it sounds like this. You can tell that as I adjust the cutoff in action, you can hear the LP, the low pass filter in action. But the problem right now is that we still don't have the characteristic plug sound that we want, so. What we're going to do is go over to our first modulation envelope. We're going to select the first field and choose cutoff AB. And then we are going to move DK up just a little bit, sustain up a little less, and release a little over halfway. And we want to apply this parameter about right there. 
So listen to how it sounds right now. So what this does is that it alters some of the sounds passing through the filter so that if adjusted correctly you'll actually get a plucking sound. Okay, and uh, I forgot to mention we need to adjust the ADSR envelope settings as well. So part A, make sure attack is at zero. You want the sound to hit immediately, kind of like a plug. Decay is going to be about halfway and release is going to be a little less than half. Do the same for B. Zero attack, half decay, a little less than half for release. start to hear the sound, start to get the characteristic Prog House sound that we want. Now what really changed the sound was I forgot to edit the ADSR settings for uh, the main oscillators and basically what this does is that the release uh, is basically how much of the sound still uh, stays after the initial note is played. So you can still hear that the sound lingers a bit. When there's no release, it just ends immediately. So it's not as it's not as powerful, not as sustaining. So we want release to be about there. So we get a really, so we get a really full sound there, and when we cut off down, we get the plucking sound. So it sounds pretty good now, and I'm going to just uh, add a few effects here. Um, EQ, we'll turn that on, and let's see. Right, so bass goes down a little bit. Uh, the frequency goes down a bit too, and turn on the treble just a bit. Reverb is optional, but you can have it if you want to give it a little more atmosphere. This especially applies when it's when the cutoff is pretty low and you have a lot of uh, plucking. So if you really want this, you would turn on reverb, uh, make the size, you can leave the same, maximum width. You want no pre-delay, so the reverb happens immediately. Uh, damp will be right in the middle at about 5 close enough and dry wet is just if it's dry you're basically completely bypassing the reverb and if it's wet it's all reverb but that's just it, it's a complete mess so you want it about here where you can hear it but it's not overwhelming sounds good all right and lastly we're also going to add uh, the compressor uh, what a compressor does basically is that it makes a sound sound louder than it really is. And because basically for uh, production, anything music, you have like, uh, well, the top, which is like zero decibels, and you can't really go beyond that. But you can, with compression, you can basically go into the sound and then make the softer elements a little louder and then keep the louder elements all well, the same. So overall, human perception thinks it's louder, even though it might not be. Oops. Okay, so um, we want the ratio to be lower. Threshold will be a little lower as well. Little attack and release is about the same. <laughs> pretty 
pretty good to me. But one more thing we can do to really make it that much louder is we apply a little drive to both of our LP filters. You can hear it will get a lot louder. And a lot more fuller, of course. Right, so that actually already sounds really good. But one secret uh, for making these synths and sounds really full and punchy is what we do is we go over here and we basically duplicate the same synthesizer. Uh, I'm just going to copy over the same melody. And we'll just uh, alter a few things here so that we can basically fill up more of the headroom with a good sound. So right now I'm going to make sure that uh, my first synth, I'm going to put it on channel 1. Right. Okay, I'll label it real quick. And then we're going to put the duplicate on channel 2. And what I'm going to do on both of these is, you'll see I already have uh, the stereo enhancer on, but I'll just go through it again. So basically what stereo enhancer does is it alters the sonic properties of the sound a bit so that it will kind of like occupy different uh, areas, so to speak, of the available headroom. Right now for the first synth, I have it uh, as default, which is no inversion, none and then a little negative uh, stereo separation. That's all you need. And for the second one, I have left inversion and then more positive stereo separation. Now remember, this right now, this is just a clone of the previous one, but we're going to make a few changes to it. Let me rename these just to make it a little clearer. Whoops. Okay, so go to the second Progressive House uh, synthesizer, the clone. And then we're going to go to part A. We're going to change the input from A, B just to A. There we go. You can just click it and then drag up and down. And then go to part B and change the input selection to B. Uh, let's see. I'm going to adjust the EQ a bit. Bass frequency, we will put it to the middle. Treble, we will boost a little and just adjust this down a little bit. What I really want to do with the second clone is that I want it to be panned out a little more. So what I'm going to do is just double click stereo on the first and second oscillators. This will bring it to the middle and not have it spread out as much. But instead I'm going to pan it out with this. So drag pan to the left about 3-ish, negative 3, 3.5, 3.05. And then pan the second oscillator to the right the same amount. Uh, positive 3.05. There we go. And we want to invert both of these as well. So right now this sounds like... It's a pretty subtle change, but it really, it really helps to like occupy more of the space available, giving you a stronger, fuller sound. I think, at least. Also gonna adjust the compression a little bit for the second one.
Uh, threshold's going to go up a bit, attack goes down a bit, and get a little more release. I'm not going to explain how compression works because that that's a whole topic on itself, but this should be enough just for this tutorial. Alright, so I think that is pretty close to the original sound. So what I've done here in the main playlist is that I I have two loops of this uh, melody and then uh, let me check something. And I've hooked the cutoff uh, knob actually to some automation clips. Uh, let me make sure that it's actually hooked up correctly. Yep, the first one is, and this one, I don't think so. So th the way you create automation clips is just going to the synth, shoot, uh, altering the parameter you want to automate just by like changing it a bit, and then going up to here and clicking Browse Parameters, and you look for the one that's highlighted. That one's going to be the one that is actually the one you want to modulate. So I, I already have the automation clip for uh, the second cutoff, so I'm just going to link the controller to number two. Right, so when I play this, you'll see that the cutoff changes with my preset automation clips. sounds pretty good and that's pretty much a really simple way to make a very solid progressive house pluck sound with silent one and of course from here you can go in so many directions you can basically go and customize stuff if you really want uh, you can sidechain the sound which is a really classic effect as well really quick way to do that is just to load up gross beat choose sidechain whoops change all the curves to a double curve Jeez. and do the same for this one I actually have it already done I'll turn it on and say we want to add a kick to it or maybe hats or something you can easily do it the end of the tutorial I hope this has helped and if you want feel free to check out the rest of my content on my channel I try to uh, get like a new track out about every month or two but it's been kind of slow lately but I appreciate any support I can get so until next time